The first cheap chip supporting 5 GHz Wi-Fi seems to be Arduino compatible. But is it any good? And which tricks do we need to know? Or is it better to wait for the new ESP32, which should also support 5 GHz Wi-Fi? Let's test it out and discover that the manufacturer included a multi-level adventure game, free of charge. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. The chip's name is RTL8720 and it comes on a development board similar to the ones we know from the ESP8266 or the ESP32. The board contains a BW16 module, a USB to serial chip, a beefy but inefficient CJT1117 regulator and a three color LED. So the first question we have to answer is, how does it compare with the ESP8266 and the ESP32. Looking at the board's pins, we see that quite a few are named NC or not connected. This is because the BW16 module only has 16 pins, where 13 are GPIO pins. So it is comparable with the ESP8266, not with the original ESP32. And it has two MCUs, one compatible with ARM Cortex-M4F and one with a low-power M0. This seems to be more like a single-core ESP32, but I did not find evidence that we can use the M0 core. The M4, by the way, is also used in the black pill and is a quite fast processor. The BW16 module has a 2 MB flash chip on board smaller than the 4 MB of the typical ESP dev boards, but sufficient for our projects. It supports BLE 5.0, whereas the ESP8266 has no BLE and the ESP32 only supports 4.2. However, this does not matter too much because the biggest advantage, a longer range of BLE 5.0, is not supported because the chip's maximum output is only 7 dBm. BLE 5.0 needs 20 dBm for the long range. 20 dBm is 100 mW and 7 dBm is 5 mW, by the way. The most significant difference to the ESP chips is the RTL chip supports 5 GHz Wi-Fi in addition to 2.4 GHz of the ESP chips. This is the only essential difference in my opinion. And it is vital because the 2.4 GHz band, with its only three non-overlapping channels, often is crowded. This can lead to unstable communication. You do not believe me? Let's have a look at what signals are in the air on the 2.4 GHz band. I do this in my basement in the countryside, where I do not receive a lot of traffic from my neighbors and the band is already quite used. Here you see the overlapping channels, by the way. Can you imagine how this would look like in a flat in a city? The 5 GHz network would also offer more speed. This is of no importance for most of our IoT applications. So we know now when to use the new RTL chip. But can we really use it with the Arduino IDE? And do we have to make compromises? And where? Let's start with the Blink sketch. If Blink does not work, we can stop and save a lot of time. Fortunately, Realtek, the chip manufacturer, created a page particularly for this board and the Arduino IDE. I start with a pinout. Arduino made that one simple. Numbers from 0 to 12. Even if internally the pins were called differently. Here they do not at all comply with this schema. They call the pins PAXX and PBXX, and they have numbers up to 30. I wouldn't say that I like that. In addition, we find LP underscore as well as LOCK underscore pins. Now it starts to become confusing. The only pins I understand are GROUND, VCC, 3.3V and CHIP ENABLE. NC also seems to be clear, not connected. 
till we have a closer look at the PCB and find a connected NC pin. Even more confusing. But this is not all. If we look to the top silk screen, we find other pin numbers, GA, GC and GE. What did the engineers think when they did this? But not finished. If we scroll down, we find another pin numbering, GPIOA underscore and GPIOB underscore. This one seems to be easy to decode. If we remove the G, the IO and the underscore, we get PA or PB from before. Let's hope that they did not mix the numbers. As with the ESP8266, we have dedicated pins for I2C and SPI and not variable ones as with the ESP32. One pin can be used as an ADC input. As we also see that the chip has two serial connections, which in the future will be more important than you think, because the engineers did not stop confusing us with different pin naming. This would have been way too easy. They wanted to separate the chickens from the brave. And here is how they did it. All dev boards I own, and if you ask my wife, there are many of them, are programmed using the USB connector. Only very few of them have two USB connectors, which then are labeled. Still, one of the two can be used for programming. Here it's different. They suggest you to connect four pins in this way before you start programming. Why is that? Because they connected the second serial connection to the USB chip, not the one needed for programming. So using USB for programming does not work out of the box. An excellent idea if you want to prevent people from using your chips. And what are these two wires for? They connect the two serial connections in parallel. Input to input is okay, but output to output? What do you have to expect if one serial connection wants to have its output high and the other low? Let's hope that they disable one serial during upload. I do not like such wiring and connect the second serial called log underscore RX and log underscore TX to an external 3.3 volt USB to serial adapter. So I can avoid those two wires. Now we are in business. Make a note on which COM port is connected to which serial. You will need it over and over again. It looks now that we have entered known territories, installing new boards in the Arduino IDE. We enter this string into the Preferences tab, go to Boards Manager, search for Ambia and install the boards. Now we can select our RTL8720 chip as usual. We only need to select the port for uploading, no other parameters to choose from. Unfortunately, they did not send me into this rat hole. The installation of the boards worked flawlessly. Do you think they gave up and let us program this chip after all the confusion? Of course not. They still suspect a few cowards amongst us. That's why they built the next riddle. They probably feared that we lose interest, so they gave us a goodie and included many examples for their chip. Not all work, as we later will see. The only one I want now is not here, the Blink sketch. So I use the standard one. It compiles and starts to upload. Cool. The only thing not clear to me is this countdown before the uploading. Maybe James Bond knows? He is good with timers at bombs. Luckily, no explosion, just the next surprise. Even if I thought I used the correct COM port, the upload fails. Also with the other COM port, by the way. So we are at the next riddle. After searching, exchanging download with upload and understanding what they wanted to tell me, I found the solution. The same procedure as always. Press the burn and reset buttons and release the reset before the burn button. Now the RTL8720 can be programmed. Simple if you know how. And really, the sketch is uploaded. Finally. Did you think we are done? Of course not. They still have one or two aces in their sleeve. The first is, our sketch will not start before we hit the reset button. Also okay. But it still does not blink. 
and it shows this message after every reset. So it seems that there is a firmware in the chip waiting for AT commands. I thought I replaced this firmware with my sketch. Interesting. And the terminal does not react to AT commands. What does this line mean? 38400, 8,1,0. I would say 38,400 port, 8 bits, 1 stop bit, no parity. But serial runs on 115,200. Do you know the trick? The other serial connection is used for the AT commands. If we use PuTTY and select 38,400, we get a response to the AT commands. Very good. Did you count how many riddles we already solved? Was this the last one? Or can we expect more challenges for the less than $10 we had to pay for this adventure game? Luckily, they included a bonus level and they wanted it to be the biggest of all. This is why they offer two possibilities to solve it and present the more complex one in the first place. That a simple guy like me easily falls into the trap and loses another few hours. In addition, they added slightly wrong or misleading information in the description. They asked me to perform an over-the-air update. I had to generate the right OTA.bin file, connect the dev board and my PC to the same Wi-Fi network, start the update server on port 8082, issue an AT command and wait till things are done only to learn that they included a much simpler method using serial. But they put it below the first complicated method I used. Do not think you did something wrong if your terminal starts to beep and write gibberish. Just put your board into upload mode and upload the blink sketch. After resetting the board, the green LED blinks and we reached the highest level of the game. From now on, it is easy. Use the second serial port for uploading and do not forget to press the two buttons before uploading and the reset button afterwards. Maybe you are lucky and your board does not contain firmware. Then you can skip a few levels and after the connection of the second serial, go right to the uploading of your sketch. Was it worthwhile the effort? Let's try to connect to my 5 GHz network. It connects to my access point. At least something. But let's check if it really uses the 5 GHz spectrum. As before, I use this professional Spectran V6 to check it out. And really, we see a strong signal on channel 40, which is a 20 MHz channel. We see also that the 5 GHz Wi-Fi offers a lot of channels and, in my case, is still more or less free. A significant advantage over the 2.4 GHz band. We also see that Serial.print uses the COM port of the USB connector. Serial 1 writes to the programming port, by the way. And if you connect both, you get some information in parallel. Next, I want to try BLE. I create a battery service and a battery client. It works. One RTL8720 can read the signals from the other one. And NRF Connect also sees it. One application of the 5 GHz range would be to use it as a presence detector like in video 382. Because most smartphones currently use the 5 GHz network and were not detected by the ESP chips. Unfortunately, the approximate library does not compile. Maybe David sees this video and adapts it to the new chip? The next thing I wanted to test was Deep Sleep. The chip seems to offer such modes and they included four examples. Unfortunately, I was not able to get them running. The pin confusion continues here because now they have introduced a new numbering scheme again. Here they call the pins DXX. This sleep mode would have been handy to test the BLE power consumption where the ESP32 chip did not perform at all. Maybe somebody knows and can create a Babelfish translator for all the different RTL8720 pin names? So what is my verdict? If you need coverage of the 5 GHz band, this is the chip to go. With the tricks learned before, it is relatively simple to use it. 
Maybe you are happy and your device does not come with pre-installed firmware. If we get some enlightening on the pins, we even should be able to get Deep Sleep working. The rest is pretty much the same as the ESP chips and should work as expected. If you need more pins, you can have a look at Seed Studio. They offer the big sister, the RTL 8722 with more pins. Is it better to wait for the new ESP32? I doubt it because I remember how long we had to wait till the Arduino IDE supported the Dash S2 chip. Of course, we can hope for a faster adoption, but I tend to base my decisions on experience rather than on hope. That was all for today. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.